and this is giving us our pH. Now we want to figure out what the pH is. Well, first of all, what is our hydronium concentration going to be? It's going to be 0.2. And now we want to try to figure out the pH. Well, what does it mean to take the P of something? The negative log. So we need to take the negative log of 0.2. So you take the log of the concentration out of the actual moles. That's right, because what does H stand for here? pH really stands for this. When people say pH, they really mean the P of the hydronium concentration. So the pH is not based on the number of moles, it's based on the concentration. That was the basic mistake that you made with your uh, original approach. What you did is you actually calculated how many moles of uh, protons we are generating. But the pH is not based on how many moles, it's based on the concentration uh, of the hydronium. So we can just stick with the point two here. For this particular problem, there's no need to ever calculate how many moles of nitric acid we have. Later in the titration, that'll probably be important, but we don't need that for this problem. So we have the negative log of point two. Now how can we take this log? We need to go over, you can't use a calculator on your test, so we have to go over and how to do that. Well, logs work best when you're working with scientific notation. So what would this be in scientific notation? That's right, two times 10 to the negative one. So I would work that out like this. I would say that the hydronium concentration then is greater than 10 to the negative 1 and smaller than 10 to the 0. Does that make so sense? This is the extra, the extra 2 that you're multiplying it by will make it, will make it more. The two is, 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 uh, is confusing to us here, but we know that um, if this, uh, we know that this is bigger than one times ten to the negative one, but it's smaller than time than ten to the zero. Well, now let's take the p of everything in this equation over here. Maybe maybe I should do it like this. I should say two. This is the number that we're focusing on, and that's between these two even powers of ten. Now let's take the p of everything. Now, this is the smallest number in this inequality. So is it going to have the biggest p or the smallest p? The biggest p. This is the biggest number, so it's going to have the smallest p. Because the p involves taking the negative log. So when a number is big, its p is small. So when we take the p's, the numbers all um, change. Now what's the p of 10 to the 0? Now what does it mean to take the log of something? Let me help you with that. What is it? Well, maybe I'll start with this. What's the p of 10 to the negative 1? Oh, that's 1. That's oh, right. Zero. That's right. What does it mean to take the p of something? Remember that it means to take the negative log. p of x is the negative log of x. Well, logarithm is the exponent of 10. The logarithm is the exponent of 10, and then we have to take the negative of that. Well, the exponent of 10 here is negative 1, and the negative of that is just positive 1. So p of 10 to the negative 1 is just positive 1. You could probably do this just kind of, uh, I don't know, by automatic instinct, because you've done so many of these problems. But what if you're given an unfamiliar concentration? Then you really need to understand what, uh, what the rules are. Well, the exponent here is 0, and what's negative 0 is just 0. And this term here in the middle represents the pH. So we figured out that the pH is between 0 and 1. This is a very acidic solution. So we have a pH between 0 and 1 here. Well, we just went over something very important. We went over how to calculate pHs without a calculator. Um, we saw how to calculate pHs uh, without a calculator. So it's important to um, go back and try this again and have, uh, have this model very clearly in your notes. You were asking me, what was the significance of the number 2 over here? Well, if there was no number 2, then the pH would just be equal to 1. 
If there was, if there was, there was no two here, the pH would just be equal to one. Um, but with the number two, we know that the concentration is between 10 to the negative one and 10 to the zero. So all we can just say is it's between these range. That's almost certainly going to be good enough for your test. For your test, you almost never, uh, all you needed to do is get the pH within a range of one, basically. So the choices are on the other one, usually two. That's right. Remember, I said it's even possible that there could be only one choice that's even acidic, and then you wouldn't have to do any of these calculations. But they don't expect you generally to calculate the pH more closely than this. So the effect of the two was that instead of the pH being equal to one, it was less than one. So notice that as far as your test is concerned, it doesn't matter whether this is the number two, or three, or four, or five, or six. All that really matters is the power of 10. That's as accurate as we're usually going to have to be. The, the test is not mainly about calculation abilities. So they're not, they're not going to give you really hugely difficult calculations here. Um, the only thing that's implied, OK, so let's go through um, the steps. So again, to cap the pH is not based on the number of moles. It's based on the concentration. So we didn't actually need the number of moles here. In order to calculate pH, though, you need to put things in scientific notation. The one thing this number has to be is it has to be between 1 and 10. This couldn't be 20, then, that would, then it would be too big. Um, so we have to put this in normal scientific notation. And then this little setup I have here is very useful for calculating pHs. By the way, I bet a lot of people would get confused here and use 10 to the negative 1 and 10 to the negative 2. So you have to think carefully and see that this number is bigger than 10 to the negative 1. And that means that the next signpost is 10 to the 0, not 10 to the negative 2. So it, it takes some uh, care. And then when you take the p's, the numbers reverse. The 0, the 10 to the 0 moves over here. And, uh, then we're now what are we going to do? We're going to look for a choice that's between 0 and 1. Now we would just look for a choice between 0 and 1. Now, it took us a long time to talk through this. But notice that, actually, if, you are, if, if we're comfortable with this, it shouldn't take long to, too, too long to do this problem. All we're really doing here is saying, gee, the concentration here is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 1. So the pH is between 1 and 0. With practice, there's not that much calculation involved here. Uh, in fact, with practice, you might not actually need to write down all of these steps. But when you're first learning the material, it's really helpful to actually write down these steps so you can see what you're doing. Okay. That would give us this first point on the titration curve at a very low pH between 0 and 1. As I was saying, that one of the things that really messes students up the most on titration is not the titration itself, it's the fact that they don't actually know how to do all the, all the various cases that come to do it with titration. Well, this is the most basic case where all we have is how to calculate the pH of a strong acid by itself, a strong acid in water. Well, this is the basic approach. And that's a very fair question on the test because it doesn't take much calculations. Okay. Now let's say that we want to figure out what will the curve look like when we're here at 50 milliliters. What would have happened when we've added 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So the, so the first thing is, let's just figure out, are we going to be acidic, basic, or neutral? This will be acidic. How do you know? Because we'll have more, more moles of acid. Yeah. Because we have the same volume of both, but a greater, greater concentration of the acid. So it would still be acidic. So maybe we don't have to do any calculations. Let's look at the choices. Maybe there's only one choice again that's in the acidic region. And then we could pick that out. And also, if we'd already done this work, we would know um, that the pH is going to have to be greater than this region over here, because we've added a fair amount of base. OK. Well, then we should actually figure out how can we actually calculate the pH in this situation. So let's see how we would calculate the pH here. Now plus NaOH, or do I still keep the water? 
What's the water still there? Yes, but okay, let's go through how to deal with this. So now we have a new situation. Before we just had a strong acid by itself, but now we have a strong acid and a strong base. Now at this point, we are going to have to turn things into moles. First thing I have to do is to turn things into moles. So um, uh, actually, I, maybe in this case it's not quite necessary because we have the same volume of both. But normally in this situation, we would have to turn things into moles. So let's go ahead and turn things into moles here. Uh, so let's see how to do those calculations. <coughs> 